Hello and welcome to Menu Docs. My name is Vex and I'm back at it again with another episode of the PHU Web Dashboard series. In today's video, we're going to be introducing the PHU library finally. I'm going to be setting up, connecting to our bridge, and changing the lights using some Python code. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to need to download PHU. Now, PHU is pretty easy to install. We're just going to use the Python package manager, pip. And we can do this by typing in pip install. Hue. Sweet, it's installed. It's a pretty small library, so I can't imagine it taking too long for you. And plus, I think mine was catched. Right, so if we look through the documentation, it's going to tell us how to connect, you know, get a basic understanding of how to use the library. So you can see we need to define a class and then connect. So let's do this. I'm just going to create a new file. I'm just going to call it our test.py file because we're going to eventually just delete it. So if you look at the documentation, it says we need to import PHU. Well, we need to import the bridge class from PHU. So we can just type this. Now we need to specify our IP address for the bridge. And I know what mine is. Mine's 192.168.0.29. Uh, it's you can find yours by navigating to your default gateway and if you don't know what your default gateway ip is or what this is i can show you so we can just type in ip config in your command prompt um there's nothing sensitive here so don't worry about it if someone else sees it and default gateway here we can just copy this in usually it's going to be like a 192.168.0.1 it's usually just like reserved for your router anyway so if we go to that It'll log in. Mine's Optus. I, I can just like type my username is. I know it's Optus and then it's my Wi-Fi password. And then I can just hit log in. I think that's the correct password. And just underneath here, we can look for, I think it's connected to the Ethernet. Yeah, so mine's plugged in by Ethernet and it tells you your IP right there. Now, if we look through the documentation, we're going to need to connect, so we can just define a new class, and I'm just going to call mine you know, bridge, something simple, and that's right, my IP was 5, and then we can just type in bridge.connect, and we can go back to our command prompt, and we can just type in python main.py. So what this is going to do, uh, whoops, I forgot that was the wrong file using our test file and okay mines must be still remembering from the last time installed but what it's going to say for you is it's going to say uh, something about a connection not found and you need to go press the little circle button on your bridge I will get a video of it and put it in so you can see what it is just to you know help visualize what I'm talking about you need to press that in come back and quickly run the file again uh, this is like, so it, it always, it's going to send a token and the, the token's like a username. So it's going to save that because that's actually how it talks to the bridge using the API. You've got to give it a, a username that the bridge has generated. Um, you, you can find them out. You can generate your own ones because if you go here and, you know, type in the IP address of your Philips Hue bridge, it's going to take you to it and it's got like a, documentation and there's a i think there's also like a visual like cli or something like i think you just type in cli I, yeah i can't remember what it was but there's ones we can generate all that type of stuff so it, it's pretty good um and you can look at the documentation if you don't want to use the python hue library um but i'm going to use it because it's you know already there and set up maybe later on down the line we can work on introducing our own features so if we look through the documentation it you know it, it it tells you a lot this documentation it's it's a pretty good documentation so we we're going to treat our lights as an object so and you can see we can get a dictionary of them by just you know calling a function which is pretty cool and then we can you know change the lights so in here if we go to here we can type in lights equals bridge dot get i forgot what it was called get light objects and then we can tell it by name so light objects and then we can get it by name so this is going to like get all the lights it's going to turn it into a 
dictionary so it's going to be like uh, adjacent type structure type thing it's I like this. it's the best way of explaining it I, I suppose um so now that we've got that we can just type we can print our light so we can just go for light in lights we should be able to just iterate through and just print the light and now if we go back to our command oh command prompt whatever you're using you can see here so I've currently got four accessories. I've got a hue, color lamp, one table lamp, tool, and a, a light strip. I'm gonna be using my tool lamp because that's actually at my desk, so it's very easy for me to record. So we can get rid of this. We don't need this. And if we type in lights, and then not lights, sorry, table lamp. So my yours is gonna be different. So you need to put in what yours is called. Like choose one out of the list or whatever you have. Choose one that you're going to use and then just go in here and put it in here. And then we're just going to have a dot. And you can see all the different objects or, you know, scopes we can access, like the dot on, dot hue, and dot saturation. So I'm going to specify mine to be on. So I'm just going to put true because it needs to, that needs to be passed. And then we can go lights, table lamp, dot hue. And I'm just going to set this to a green color, so 16,000. So if I go here and type in test, and now it's a green color for me. You can change the saturation, uh, as in the documentation. It's, uh, I believe it's lights and then dot sat. And you can, we can double check by going back to the documentation, and uh, it's actually dot saturation. You can change the brightness too, so let's change the saturation brightness. I'm just going to change the saturation to like, it's out of, I think with the actual, with this library, it, it's out of 0 to 255 or 1 to 255. So you can do the max. I think it's like, you had times it by like 2.5 or something to get it out of 100. So anyway, I'm just going to set mine to like, let's go like 50 for now. And for the brightness, it's out of 1 to 255 again too. So later on, we can do like a, a little basic max formula to convert it to like a percentage type thing for our API. And brightness, we can just type in like, uh, we'll go like 75 for now. So I actually gotta change this back to a red color. So I know the red hue is about 600 and it's gonna change it to a nice red color. So we execute this again. It's gone to a very light pinkish borderline white because we've changed the saturation. And, you know, we can make it full red by just changing the saturation back up to 255. And now it's a red color. Eventually going to create a file in our next episode where we're going to have all our functions to change the colors and brightness, saturation, and all that for our API. Um, but this episode was mainly just to show you how to get the library set up. Um, I, I tried to get it to a state where it was going to forget the token, so I'd have to redo it, but it didn't. But... It happens, but anyway, when that does happen, you, you just rerun it after you've hit the button. It's pretty easy anyway. So yeah, thanks for watching this episode. Uh, I know it was a short one, but I've done a couple of long ones, so kind of due for a short one. Thanks for watching, and if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, dislike it, and just leave a comment of what I should improve. Anyway, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!